Hi, and welcome to another weekly commentary. My name is Stuart Brigman. Last fall, world leaders converged in Glasgow for the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change to accelerate action toward the goals of the 2015 Paris Agreement. Now, while the efficacy of the outcomes of COP26 will no doubt continue to be the subject of great debate, the global discourse around the energy transition has clearly changed. True, the scale and scope of the transition are as polarizing and emotive as ever, but a decarbonization of the global energy sector is almost universally recognized as an important step to reducing global carbon emissions and mitigating the effects of climate change. Can the supply of key metals and minerals needed for this transition keep up? The clean energy transition needed under the IEA's Net Zero by 2050 roadmap would see the share of power generated by solar, wind, hydropower rise to 60% from 10% today, and this would require an enormous scale-up of renewable energy capacity over the next decade. Just to give you a sense of magnitude, for solar alone, the IA estimates that this means adding the equivalent of the world's largest solar park roughly every day for the next 10 years. As the electrification of the economy takes hold, downstream applications would also need to adjust. Electric vehicles, for instance, would go from around 9% of global car sales to more than 30% in that time. And this would lead to a surge in demand for copper, silicon, silver, zinc, iron ore, and aluminum. You can also add to that the demand for the lithium, nickel, manganese, and cobalt used in EV batteries to say nothing of the metals needed for the transmission and distribution grids, charging stations, and other infrastructure adaptations. In fact, according to the IMF, metals demand could surge by as much as 3 billion tons in the coming decades as a result. Under a 1.5 degree scenario, Wood McKenzie, an energy mining uh, and mining consultancy, expect copper and aluminum demand to increase by more than 60% by 2040, nickel demand to more than double, and cobalt and lithium demand to surge by 4 and 12 times respectively. Even a less ambitious pathway still calls for demand growth of a truly transformative nature, and given current production rates, supplies are likely to significantly undershoot. The shortfall is further complicated by the geographical concentration of natural reserves, potentially pushing mining companies into more complex jurisdictions from both a political and regulatory risk perspective. Think about the fact that the world's largest cobalt producing country is the Democratic Republic of Congo, responsible for more than 70% of the world's cobalt supplies. Increased commercial interests have also raised the risk of nationalization in some countries endowed with these critical resources. The pursuit of materials needed to help facilitate the clean energy transition also often draws opposition from advocacy groups due to very real concerns around environmental and local community impacts. Serbia, for example, recently revoked lithium exploration licenses over environmental concerns after thousands of people blocked roads in protest against the government's backing of the $2.4 billion project. In the US, authorities are stalling projects due to environmental concerns, notwithstanding that country's very real need to secure strategic metals and reduce foreign dependence. The current U.S. administration, for example, recently canceled an approved environmental impact statement for a mine in Arizona in response to local community uh, opposition. Securing strategic metals is now being viewed as a matter of national security and key corporate strategy. Governments are throwing in money, public money, to help secure supplies of critical and strategic metals as prices of raw materials skyrocket. On the corporate side, downstream users are looking to vertical, in vertical integration to help secure supplies with an increased focus on localized supply and a reduced carbon footprint, and the market is seeing a flurry of new entrants, entrants looking to cash in. And the amounts we're talking about here, particularly for the big five transition metals, are in the billions, if not trillions of dollars over the next 10 years. This will no doubt fuel a wave of R&D and innovation, leveraging current technologies and paving the way for new ones. The bottom line, the need to reduce the carbon emissions produced by global energy consumption is clear. But an economy still very much powered by traditional energy sources, no one said it would be easy. The global energy transition will put pressure on critical metal supplies, feeding pricing, pricing pressures that could exacerbate current inflationary trends. But there are opportunities for companies and countries well positioned to take advantage. This emerging challenge is also generating a wave of research and innovation around extending and optimizing battery life, recycling materials, and alternative sources of energy. 
Throughout the course of human history, every major economic disruption has created new classes of winners. This one will be no different. This week, a special thanks to Joanna Zhang, Quantitative Analyst here at EDC Economics. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time.